Chapter 4 The whole walk back to town, our heads are spinning. I mean, not really spinning. That would be weird because human heads are not designed to spin. In fact, a spinning head is probably fatal. Unless you're a zombie, oh man, zombie heads can spin. One time I whacked one with my hockey stick and, eek, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go for the headshot. Spin, 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 gar. So, maybe not technically spinning, but yeah, we are confused. We just got whooped, whooped by a human. A human who speaks the language of Rezok. A human who stole my Louisville slicer. I'm in a, I'm lost in a general sort of feeling sorry for myself vibe, which is not a Jack Sullivan type feeling. I never feel sorry for myself. The worse things get, the, mo the more gung-ho positive I am. That's like my trademark. Well, actually, the Louisville slicer is my trademark and crude she stole it from the human she stole it the she stole it the human stole my trademark i mean like me i mean what's louis Lu, luke skywalker without his lightsaber just a farm boy with this whiny streak or what's katniss without her bow and arrow she's probably the first tribute to bite the big one that's what we're committing into wakefield town square we're coming into wakefield Times square the place where my, me, my human buddies, and the good dude monsters live in awesome harmony. Monster City. And in Monster City, I see worried monster faces. Oh, I said, that's nice. They're sad for me because I don't have my bat. Jack said, they have no idea. They, ha they have no idea you lost your bat, June says. Don't, lo didn't lose, I say. Stolen. J J June sighs. You know what I mean. Um, no. Actually, I don't know what you mean. Retainers are lost. Phone chargers are lost. This is grand theft. June groans. Oh, uh, oh, okay, fine, Jack, whatever. Bottom line, the reason the monsters are bummed is just because they now, now they extra afraid of the snow. June's right. I see it on their faces. Fear. The winter hurt the humans. The snow pummeled them. Wake me when this nightmare has passed. No, no, the winter didn't hurt us. It was a bad human and a giant monster, I shout. I s catch sight of Bartle. He's the first monster friend who got to know well. And he's eyeing me like he he's knows something is up. He beckons to us for the doorway of his home base. Joe's pizza moment, moments later were inside, sitting in an old grease-stained booth. Bartle's across from me. Bartle. Bartle pours me, Bartle pours me a cold grape soda, and I knock it back in one swig. I was going to deliver a very serious dramatic speech, but I started talking. My friends got excited, but I started talking. My friends got excited, and it, and it just comes out. We saw a human. She she says, she, but we saw a human. She was riding a big monstrous type monster, and the human stole my Louisville slicer. More importantly, Bartle, she spoke the words of Rezok, the language that bad dudes speak. The language that bad dudes speak. The Bar Bartle's face freezes. A human spoke the language. Are you certain? I nod. What did she say? Bartle asked. I must know the words. Quinn is good with languages. He's been taking French, Spanish, and Bargolin since the, like third grade. I'm not certain I can pronounce it. He says it was something like Zoo Zot Core. Junior, I'm at, June knows Spanish because her parents spoke it at home. Her attempt sounds like Zoo Zot Color. I guess I, I don't know. I haven't heard of those words in Spanish. I don't even know if they ain't, if there are words. June sighs. Jack Cores aren't snake donuts. Jack's Cores aren't snack are, are not snake donuts. They're just long pastries that have no Nope, snake donuts, I say. Dirk suddenly slams his fist on the table. His voice is a growl. Guys, this is serious. Stop talking about snake donuts. He seems embarrassed to try, but then says, Bartle, I heard something like Ahem Sutler Cuffler. Cutler. Ha what? There's no way I can pronounce that. Bartle's eyes narrow. Whatever, Dirk said. He got it right. Bartle, Bartle gently messages. Massages one of his long ha ear hairs. This means it has begun. Wait, what's begun? June asked. Suddenly a cold darkness seems to pass over the room. A shiver. 
The lights flicker, it's a coincidence, I'm sure. Just ice on the generator, but it's eerie. Bardo shakes his head. I do not know what's begun, but for some reason a human speaks the language of Rezok. The humans stole your blade, and with it, the humans have begun something. Bardo suddenly stands. You must get back the Louisville Slicer. See, I told you we need to get it back. You thought I was overreacting for making such a big deal about it. But Bardo agrees, and Bardo knows all. Oh, so a crower would be delicious if we could find one. Chapter 5 that night, the strange human villain hunts my dreams like the baddie in, in a like the baddie in a in an eighties horror movie. I wake up shivering, partly from the cold because yeah, it is freezing. My winter sleeping outfit is someone's weird old Halloween Chewbacca costume, and Quince makeshift hater, a bunch of PlayStations and Xbox piled on one top of another, is not working. But mostly, it's a shivering. It's a shiver of fear that. That was a human villain, a human villain using my weapon as a part of a bad dude plan. We need to find that human and retrieve and retrieve my Louisville slicer and soon. Because if this monster riding human decides to attack, I'm afraid we're unprepared. See, our monster town is now a ghost town. The monsters are huddled up inside stores and shops inside Wakefield Town Square, too terrified of the snow to come out. This must be fixed. I brew some hot chocolate and the, um, and the smell... Soon had my buddies waking. Guys, I say the villain lady knows about uh, knows stuff about Rezok. So if I if a fight goes down, and fights do kind of always go down around here, then we need our monster buddies ready to rumble along us alongside us, and they are not ready to rumble. We must show them the wonders of winter. I don't think I don't get their problem with winter rolls. That's that way, when the bad stuff sets off, they won't be too terrified to battle alongside us. Okay, I'll give you a battle. Follow me. Moments later, we're outside having a light-hearted, just horsing around buddy snowball fight. I meant snowball battle. Isn't winter the best, I shout. As I hurl a snowball, such a delight, Jane says. Monsters started watching. Some are huddled up and blankets peering through frosty windows. I think I, think I even see one watching through a mailbox slot. I grin, guys, play up the play up the fun. I whisper, everyone loves a good friendly snowball fight. That's what Quint appears on the deck of the treehouse with an uh, army and uh, with an arm full of snowballs. Artillery are old art, artillery our old fashioned snowball battle rate. Turns awesomely pop <sighs> Sorry, I'm having anxiety. Oh shoot! Nope, 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 nope. Our old-fashioned snowball battle turns awesomely post-apocalyptic and gadget-filled. Dirk wields our old tennis blaster 2000, which is now the mobile snow spear slinger, and things intense. Sploot fling. We're all giggling and laughing and freezing, and it's working. A monster comes rambling out and joins the fun. Unfortunately, the monster is big, and he scoops up a big and sized snowball, and frost begin blast. And then, and that's the end of that. The big, the big and blast freezes us to the core. We spent the rest of the day in the in the treehouse, huddled up near the video game system, trying to get warm. And the monsters are now extra freaked out. They've become afraid of snow in both flake form and ball form. When we finally finish thawing out, Dirk makes a suggestion, ice fishing. Fish for ice, I ask. I, we would fish for ice. Ice is everywhere. The whole, we, Why would we fish for ice? Ice is everywhere. The whole world is basically a Super Mario snow level. No, Dirk, Dirk says. You fish for fish through a hole in the ice. It's my favorite part about winter. Come on, I know a spot. We convince Shelka and a few other monsters to join us. They agree, but only after I promise they'll get to eat giant chunk, ch giant hunks of raw fish. We walked along the wooded trail, freezing our butts off when I heard movement in the trees. Well, look, June says. Two little critters just, want, just went trumbling past. Shelka halts. A strange snarl sound escapes her nostrils and her hands tighten around her axe. She suddenly means business. What what are those rolling goo ball things? I ignore it. It is, a, it is Warg, the alone one. What's the alone one? June asks. A one in the 
one not in the community. Shoka says one that does not matter. And the way Shoka says it is clear the conversation is over. Shoka is no big fan of the alone one. At the lake, I learned something that a bummer ice fishing is not the most boring thing on earth. You drill a hole in the ice and you just sit there. That's literally it. The whole thing. You can't even talk per because apparently that scares away the fish. After the fifth hour of cold nothingness, I say if monsters don't get me first, I will die of boredom. Hey, no, talking, Dirk says. Listen to nature. Hear the, pe hear the peace and quiet. Ice tent test tentacle, tentacle burst. Be gone, cold one. Oh dear, such horrors. Sli such slicing. Oh, please, God, don't make me throw up. Oh, it's so bad. It's like not bad. It's just in my upper, lower, and my like upper and lower abdomen, and in my lower and, and like in my entire stomach. So like here and like the upper and lower, and like also in my intestines, like in my like lower, lower, and in my lower and upper. So basically, in my upper and lower. So it's like all over, and it's like a burning sharp pain in it that won't go away. All right. I'm just gonna work not worry so fishing was a big fat icy fell the only thing we got we caught was a cold and there's no way Quint was a with the runny nose is gonna get any creature excited about winter I'm sitting in the treehouse bemoaning all this when Quint says snowman snow creatures June declares I kept my mouth shut but I had thoughts on the snowman one word overrated it's one of those things that sounds awesome but it never is but it is never as good as it, as you think it's going to be I always start off excited about building some massive amazing snowman, but then a few hours later, it's okay I guess. Lame new kid. But we actually do pretty good. Dirk is like a, a master snow craftsman. He even gets out a tool kit and carves a totally beautiful ice sculpture. Dude is full of hidden talents. It's going well until the monsters get a load of our constructions and then it goes bad. Icy snow evil crush the snow demons. What about ice skating, June asked. Ice skating is fun, and before you could give me grief, I'm not talking regular ice skating. I'm talking the end of the world ice skating. Down the old hallway they, that runs to the beach and boardwalk, Dirk's in because he's a hockey master. June's in because she's generally athletic, noble, and above average at everything. Quinn's in because he doesn't like being left out of things. It's growing a weary array of course it's going already because this i don't even know how you say that because this massive hibernating horror rakes me up and goes nuts monster was asleep now awake now angry oh my gosh is this oh my gosh how long is this chapter all right guys well we're work i'm going to continue this in a little bit okay guys I'm back. I'm gonna finish it. I'm beat. Totally out of I out of ideas for turning our monster friends into winter lovers and eat. Wait, what type? What page are we? Okay. I beat. I'm beat. Totally out of ideas for turning our monster friends into winter lovers. And even worse, we're not closer to figuring out what the deal is with the villainess and what she did with my Louisville slicer. She could be a dunno slow dancing with it right now. Or, or uh, I need a long winter nap, so I head to our hammock. But when I got there, I see that June's beat me to it. And she looks even more bummed out than I feel. Oh, real quick, our hammock is not a regular hammock. Oh, it's a hammock. Oh my gosh. It's not a regular hammock. It's a monster winter hammock, and it's kind of the best. See, after the temperature dropped, we discovered that one monster, Kalen, constantly radiates, radiates heat. His whole body feels like some sort of living fireplace. So I be napping. I be so I be so I being a napping expert grabbed a hammock from a local home dip. The part depot at the part. Yeah, depot, home depot, and strung it up. I suspended, I suspended it from Kaylin's bi biggest black spikes. I'm pretty sure I have created the single most snuggly. I have created the single most snuggly sleeping spot on planet Earth. I sit down next to June. We lay together for a bit, just quietly, looking up at a cloudy blue sky. You okay, buddy? I finally ask. 
June shrugs and pushes off from his spike, swinging us out. It's just all this winter stuff. It reminds me of, you know, Christmas. It's got me thinking about the last year's Christmas. Normal Christmas. Last year's Christmas. Normal Christmas. Back when the world was regular and not just like some sort of monster zombie crossbow filled adventure skate. I know the world is not as. I know the world is the best, right? I know the world is the best now, right? June shout, shoots me a look. Oh, right, I forgot. She doesn't love the monster zombie crossbow filled adventure escape the same way I do. June continues. When we were getting ready to set out on our road trip for New York, I had this idea. I'm sure it was a total pipe dream of a hope. But I thought we might get to New York and find my family and, and in time for Christmas. Then I could celebrate Christmas for real. But I guess not. I'm not sure what to say. See, I was an orphan, never had a real family. When the world went to the monsters, my foster family of the month fled here with my buddies and monster community. I feel finally I finally feel like I do have a family, but for my human friends, it's the opposite. Sometimes I forget that the gung ho ha the gung ho happiness that comes so easy to me is way harder for everyone else. And I can't keep forgetting that. It's not right it's not right being a good friend. It's not being a good friend. Sorry, I made a mistake there. And being a post op apocalyptic monster battling tornado of wannabe cool that stuff's great, that stuff's important, but it's not even a fraction as important as being a solid buddy. And that's what June needs right now. Then it hits me, two birds, one stone. I set up a crab, June, by the shoulder. I grab, I sit up and grab June by the shoulders. June, I can't give you the classic family Christmas, but together we can have our own totally original joy missile of a Christmas with just our best buddies in the world. We can make up our own new traditions like Christmas fireworks. Aren't those the best? Christmas fireworks aren't a thing, Jack. They are now, I said. Also, Christmas pie eating contest. June, this is actually amazing. We have the best chance to design our own awesome Christmas, our own awesome Christmas, just as crazy, weird, and whatever as we want. June shifts in the hammock. She blows into her hands, thinking, and you know what? Since Christmas is the best, I smile and nod. If there's one thing that can convince the monsters that Christmas is A-OK, -okay, it's Christmas. Wait, the one thing that convinced the monsters that winter is A-OK, -okay, it's Christmas. Boom, June says, seal it with the first bump, with a fist bump. We walk back to the treehouse at the ladder. June suddenly stops. She looks deep in my, into my eyes. I'm wondering if this might be sort of a romantic moment or something. But instead, Jack, I need a new weapon. This boom spear stinks. I whacked the meat hook and it didn't do a thing. Maybe like a Hunger Game type bow. But that's far, that's far away fighting. A spike glove would be rad. But the only, th the only good if, that's only good if like a monster gets me in a headlock. It's hard. I would. I want like a little bit of everything. You got a Lewis. You got your. You've got your Louisville slicer, and you love it. Chin says. I want to feel that sort of love for a monster battling weapon. It's true. My love for the Louisville slicer is one of the, a lifetime love. Oh, but I. I could write a song about it, and June deserves that sort of love. That will be my Christmas gift to her. One post. A post optimistic monster battling tool to rule them all, battling told to rule them all. And you know what else? I had my worst, and I, I have lost my love. No worse, my love was torn from me. It has fallen into the hands of an enemy, and that enemy is up to something. I'm not just waiting around, and I need to go and get it. I need to find out who this villain is, because only then will I get what I want for Christmas. That's it for chapter four and five. That was like the longest video of this book so far. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.